These days, the average cost of a Bugatti car is over $1 million. The incredible luxury vehicles are known around the world as some of the most beautiful and highest quality cars available for purchase. The brand has undoubtedly made a name for itself over the past 100 years. You may be surprised to learn that the origin story of this incredible car manufacturing company starts with the young boy of a designer and a silversmith. Before Bugatti was synonymous with prestigious vehicles, Bugattis were known in Italy as artists and designers. Carlo Bugatti, born in 1856, was a renowned designer, silversmith, and award-winning furniture designer. His artistic abilities were immense and important to the time, and when he started his family, Carlo desperately wanted his two sons to follow in his footsteps. One of Carlo's sons, Rembrandt, became an artist as his father wanted and created realistic and beloved animal sculptures. However, his other son, Natore, born in 1881, realized that art such as sculpture was not his calling and believed he did not have the talent to become a true artist. Instead, he set his sights on a different profession, engineering. In fact, he noticed his love for automobiles very early when he decided to make adjustments to a tricycle-type vehicle he was gifted. In 1898, he decided to enroll in an apprenticeship at the Prenetti and Stucchi Automobile Company in Milan. Luckily for Ettore, he didn't face any backlash from his father for this change in career paths. In fact, his father encouraged the apprenticeship as he believed if his son was to succeed in engineering cars, he needed formal training. While working for Prenetti and Stucci, Ettore created his first motorized tricycle, Type 1, at only 17 years old. And only two years later, he designed and manufactured his first four-wheel car, the Bugatti Type 2. The car was impressive for the time and won multiple awards as it could run at 10 kilometers per hour. The first car propelled Ettore into the world of automobiles and made him quite an up-and-comer in the industry. His first car, the Type 2, gained the attention of many automobile manufacturers such as Baron Adrian de Dietrich. So just before turning 21 years old, Ettore moved to Asaki to work for the Baron as a car designer and engineer. Interestingly, because Ettore was not yet 21, his father Carlo had to sign his work contract with the company. From here, Ettore began creating models exponentially faster, and by 1904, he had produced types 4 through 7. They were called De Dietrich Bugatti vehicles, and while they were considered financially successful, the collaboration didn't last. Some say that Adrian decided to abandon his car company, leaving Ettore without a job. Whereas others say Atori was fired because of his obsession with creating race cars as opposed to marketable production cars. The young and ambitious car designer then teamed up with Emil Mathis and they moved their company to Strasbourg. But this partnership only lasted two years. Atori decided at this point to turn his attention to research as opposed to manufacturing. He began working with German car company Dutz. After gaining the title for director with Dutz, he designed several models of production and market-friendly cars, but he spent his free time creating plans for his true passion, race cars. By 1907, he was already hard at work on his model he called Type 10, the first independent Bugatti car. It had a small, compact engine, which made it ideal for racing. After the creation of the Type 10, Ettore decided that he wanted to focus all of his energy, not just his free time, on his own creations, and left Dutz behind to strike out on his own. In 1909, Atore moved to Mosheim to open his first ever independent company and factory, Automobiles e Bugatti. However, it's important to note that the young entrepreneur did not have the funding to start the business himself and arranged a loan through the bank to create his first fleet. Luckily, the company was almost immediately successful as people loved the look and feel of Bugatti's impressive automobiles. Although this should have been a wonderful time for Ettore, unfortunately, personal tragedy made this the saddest time in his life. His brother Rembrandt committed suicide after World War I began. His life took a horrible turn when his beloved zoo was destroyed and the animals on which he based his famous statues were killed. Atori decided to honor his late brother with a car, the Bugatti Royale. It was the longest and most beautiful car he had ever made, and he placed a replica of his brother's sculpture of the rearing elephant on the hood. 
However, even through this incredibly difficult time, Ettore continued to create amazing automobiles and improve his business. By the mid-1920s, Ettore was working side by side with his son, Jean, and the two designed and built many sports cars models that would soon be the envy of the entire continent. In 1911, the Type 13 was the first Bugatti car to be driven in the French Grand Prix. And by 1929, Bugatti was known as a prominent race car choice because of the fame it received when driven by Helene Nice in the first ever Journée Féminine at Autodrome de Marly. Helene Nice set several records, including setting a land speed record for women at 190 km per hour, driving a Bugatti, and was dubbed the Bugatti Queen. She won the Women's Grand Prix over and over in the Bugatti 35 and the car became the most popular racing model the company produced, and won thousands of races among various drivers. In addition to creating some of the world's best automobiles, Ettore also put his efforts into manufacturing more than just cars. During World War I, the Bugatti factory began building airplane engines that Ettore had designed. These engines were purchased by the French and American Air Forces and not only became essential in the war itself, but also proved to be financially necessary to keep the company afloat, while sales diminished during the war. As well as focusing on the necessary engineering of the time, Ettore also set his sights on making everything in his life better, including the alcohol he drank, bicycles, and even toy cars. He opened a distillery, created a new type of bicycle, and built a toy car for his son's birthday that far surpassed the quality of anything available on the market all while continuing to create cars that were beloved by racing drivers and the wealthy elite of Europe. Surprisingly, Bugatti successfully made it through the Great Depression by focusing on mass production. At the time, this was only 80 cars of the same model. But more tragedy was on the way. In 1936, there was a strike in Molsheim that essentially completely debilitated the plant's ability to continue manufacturing cars. Debts piled up and Ettore decided to move back to Paris, leaving the factory in the hands of his son and second-in-command, Jean. Sadly, in 1939, Jean died when test-driving one of the cars when he swerved to avoid a cyclist. His death was extremely challenging for Ettore, both personally and for his company. That same year, tragedy arrived for the entire planet as World War II broke out. The Nazi party took control of the Molsheim factory, and essentially, Ettore lost his entire business. Before the war was over, Bugatti had lost his business, as well as his wife Barbara, and although he continued to design cars in the hopes of reopening his business after the war, it seemed like an almost impossible feat after all he had been through. After the war, Ettore remarried and decided to hand over the company reins to his son, Roland, but Roland did not have good luck in the automobile industry as his cars couldn't keep up with the engineering and technological advances of the time, and the company went bankrupt. Ettore died in Paris in 1947, and although his car company was essentially non-existent, his legacy and over 1,000 patents he created would live on forever. In 1998, the name Bugatti and company still existed, although they had not made any cars in decades and the German company Volkswagen decided to buy the rights to the name. Interestingly, the Bugatti name had changed ownership several times over the years, and although it wasn't considered a financially successful business, the name alone was still extremely valuable for the designs and success of Ettore all those years before. In fact, Volkswagen paid an incredible $50 million for Bugatti, which was seen as a slightly ridiculous business decision by the company's CEO, who seemed to only want the business as a passion project. Volkswagen wanted to completely restyle the luxury car brand. The company had recently purchased Rolls-Royce and Lamborghini and were ready to change the automobile industry from the ground up. In 2005, they released the Bugatti Veyron. It cost more than $1 million, was ludicrously luxurious, and extremely fast. Over the next 15 years, Volkswagen continued to fund the creation of Bugatti cars that were equally as impressive as the Veyron, and the price tags only went up. Many Bugatti models cost as much as $3 million. In the new millennium, purchasing a Bugatti didn't only mean buying one of the fastest and most well-made cars on the planet, it also meant showing the world that you had money to spend. Therefore, dozens of big celebrities such as Drake, Tom Brady, 
Jay Leno and Cristiano Ronaldo got their hands on a Bugatti, making them even more desirable to the masses. Sometimes known as supercars or hypercars, Bugattis were back on the map in a way they never had been before. However, the company was still losing money as the cars were so expensive to make and were only available to an extremely small portion of the wealthy. So Volkswagen sold Bugatti to Rimac, a Croatian automobile company. Now known as Bugatti Rimac, the company is striving to create vehicles that live up to the name Bugatti and all it represents. While many people still watch to see what Bugatti will produce, many see the vintage cars produced by Ettore and his son Jean to be the true collector's items and strive to have one in their collections. The older Bugattis were seen as works of art more than cars, and therefore, just as Ettore's father would have wanted, his son will always be remembered as an incredible artist and designer. Hungry for another fascinating business story? Click on the following video to hear the crazy story about the son of a poor seamstress who created Versace.